Let's talk about what to do if you have a clog in your sample or in the instrument. Um, the first step is to figure out if the clog is due to your sample or if the clog is something a problem with the instrument. Um, so first let's rule out a sample issue. Oftentimes you have a clump of cells that go uh, fall to the bottom of the tube and every time you load that tube you find that your event rate is zero and that's because a chunk of cells or debris immediately clogs the SIP orifice. So my first suggestion would be to try another tube that you've confirmed has cells in it that have run and see if that if that sample runs. Uh, if it does then your sample probably is the issue, the sample that's clogging. Uh, second problem that can happen is you can have a hairline crack in your tube. Uh, so for example this tube it's almost imperceptible but it has a hairline crack in it. That will not allow the SIP to pressurize or the tube to pressurize and if the tube can't pressurize no sample can run through the instrument. So again the solution to this would be try a different tube and see if, if that one runs and if so uh, put your sample into a new tube. Um, a third one that happens quite often is people just don't have any cells in the tube. They think they have cells in that sample, but there are actually no cells in there. So try, a, again, the solution, try another tube you know has cells in it and see if that, that tube is having any problem. If you've ruled out that your sample is the issue, then it's you're going to want to look at the instrument. And so the first thing to look at um, when I see that people are getting no events or very low events is, is there sheath in the sheath tank? Uh, so you would want to check out the sheath tank and pick it up to make sure there's still volume in it or look at the scale to make sure it's still reading that there's sheath in it. Uh, if there is not, obviously refill the tank. If there is, you'll want to try to prime the machine. So you'll put a tube of partially filled with water just about 500 microliters of water, and press the prime button. When you do that, you should see bubbling. You should see large bubbles uh, coming back out of the sip. So what it's basically doing is it's drained the flow cell and it's uh, shooting air back out through the sip. If it's doing that, that's a good sign. Um, I would probably do that two times, so I'll do it a second time. You should see large bubbles. And now, after, after the, the prime is done, I would suggest trying to run your sample again. And hopefully that has cleared, that's back flushed the clog. Um, if you see tiny bubbles when you do the back flush, that means you've got a partial clog in the SIP. And the least invasive solution for that is to try and run bleach through for about 10 minutes um, to break up whatever the clog is inside the SIP uh, and run the instrument on high. After 10 minutes, I would try a couple more primes and then try running your sample. If you see no bubbles coming back, that's the sign that you have uh, a severe, what I would call a severe clog. Basically nothing is able to flow through the SIP. And so there are a couple strategies to deal with that. So I'll demonstrate two of them. Um, first one is we use a syringe that's attached to tubing and I've just loaded a couple mils of DI water in the syringe. And Now you'll want to put the instrument on run. And open the arm of the SIF. Take off the tube. Now I'm going to lower this tube holder by turning it uh, counterclockwise, oh, sorry, clockwise, just so it's kind of out of the way. This little thing is just a a backstop for if the tube pops off so you don't your tube doesn't shoot onto the floor. Um, and what you're going to try and do now is thread the tubing onto the sip. This can be a little tricky. You might want to hold the sip 
the metal part with one hand and press the tubing on with your other free hand. So now the syringe is attached to the sip and there's about a quarter inch of uh, it's about a quarter inch sleeve that's on there. And now I'm going to close this. So now the cytometer is trying to suck up sample. It's on run. And I'm just going to apply even force and a reasonable amount of force. And you should see volume going through the syringe. So it looks to me like it's about a half mil or so every 10 seconds that are going through this as I'm pressing. You don't want to apply so much force that you pop off any of the tubing, uh, but you don't want to apply too little force that nothing goes through. And the idea when you're doing this is that you're forcing the clog to go through the instrument, um, which is fine. It won't harm the instrument. So I've pushed about a mil of fluid through and it went through just fine. Now you can open the sip arm, take this tubing off, and now it's on run and you should see it dripping back now. So hopefully if it wasn't dripping back before, now you are getting some drip back. If pushing with this syringe is not working, um, the last sort of line of defense is these uh, fine wires called cleaning stylus. And both uh, the cleaning stylus and the syringe with tubing can be found in the drawer underneath the LSR. The cleaning stylus is kind of the nuclear option and I would not recommend doing it unless you were trained on, on doing it. Um, these are about a real thin wire, probably about 100 microns I would guess in, in size, in thickness. And it's a long uh, wire that will go all the way into the sip. It almost looks like there's nothing in this holder. But once you open the cap, you'll see, let me grab this one. You'll see a really thin uh, wire. On one end of the cleaning stylus, it's a good idea to make a small hook, as you can see there. Um, the rest of the stylus, you want to be extremely careful not to bend. Keep it extremely straight. Uh, otherwise, any little kink or any little imperfection in it uh, won't allow it to be threaded up into the sip. And so you're going to take your straight end, And you're going to do your best. Uh, you can do this on standby so it's not dripping. Change it to standby. And you're going to do your best to thread the wire into the sip. This can be an extremely difficult process. Often it takes several minutes before you get it to thread. But then once it's threaded, just very gently push it up, being extremely careful not to kink it. If you feel any resistance, stop or you're going to kink the wire. And you want to push the wire all the way up until you get to that hook that you made initially. So the wire can go all the way in uh, all the way into the flow cell. And now I would just several times pull jack back and forth uh, on the wire. And then pull it back completely out. And now you can put the machine on run again. And now you should see drip back. and that would indicate that your clog has been cleared.